Hi, this is Mrs. Freifeld, and I'm going to give you some more examples of how to find a percent bar graph, matching it with the data. Okay, here's one that was on a star test some years past. And what I want you to look at first is in the data, do you see how the light gray is your biggest number? So in each one of the percent bar graphs, you would expect the light gray to be the the biggest or the longest. And I see that that's true in the first one. I see it's true in the second one. I, it, it's too close. I don't want to eliminate a possible answer choice, so I'm going to leave C alone. But obviously, this is the answer cannot be D because the light gray is not the biggest. So I'm going to get rid of that choice. And now that I've done that, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to figure out what the actual percent is of let's choose the white. So to find the percent of that, the first thing I need to do is make a fraction. So I'm going to add up these numbers and they add up to be 25. So that's going to be my denominator, 25. And if I use the white, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use my numerator. I'm going to make it 8. And the reason I'm choosing white is it's really the easiest to read because it starts at 0. So the first one is 31, 32, 33, something like that. The second one is 30. And C is going to be 25 or 26, something like that. They're all different, and they're the easiest to read. So my fraction is 8 over 25. And the next thing that I'm going to do to change that fraction to a percent is I'm going to Tebow it. So I'm going to divide it. So it's top in and bottom out. And I can see that when I divide 8 25ths, it is, it equals 32 hundredths, or 0.32. And then to change that decimal to a percent, I move the decimal point two spaces to the right. So 0.32 is 32%. Now let me go back to my data. Well, it looks like it, it could be A. Let me check the rest of them. B, nope, that's not 32, that's 30, so it's not B. And C, well, that's definitely not 32, it's not C. So A is the right answer choice. Now this one looks a little different because I don't actually have a percent bar graph, but I do have charts that have percents in them. And I can use the same kind of reasoning to get started. If I look over here at my data, and I see that with black, I have 15, 10, 12, 5, and 8. That's the data that I have. I can see that black has the most numbers, so it should be the largest percent. I'm going to go over to my data charts, and I'm going to see if black has the largest percent. Well, here I see that, yes, 15% is the largest. It could be A. I go to B. Well, black is not the largest. In this case, it says white is. So, no, it's not B. Let's go to C. Is black the largest percent? No, it isn't. Again, white is. So I'm going to get rid of that one. And then I go to the last one. And yes, I see that black has the largest percent. So it's either going to be A or B. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and try, try to solve this. I'm going to find out what percent is let's say yellow. I look at the two charts and I see yellow is 10 here, yellow is 20% there. Let me give this a try. First thing I do is come up with my denominator. And I do that by adding up all the different colors. So that is my denominator. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to choose yellow and find out what percent of this data here, right here, is yellow. So I'm going to use 10 on the top. I could have used any of them as long as they're different in the two different charts. And from there, I'm going to go ahead and simplify it. That seems to be the smartest thing. I'm going to cross out the trailing zeros and make it 1 fifth. And that's the one that I'm going to divide or Tebow. So you see over here, its top number is in, the bottom number is out. That's why I'm calling it Tebow. And I can see that that equals 
two or two tenths. And then if I move the decimal point two places to the right, it's 20%. So I'm going to look at A. Is yellow 20%? Nope. I'm going to go down to D. Is yellow 20%? Yes. D is the correct answer. I could have done it with any color as long as I use this as my denominator and then whatever color I chose, I use that color for my numerator. I'm going to do one more. I'm going to do it the same way I did before. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look over here and find out which number is the biggest. And I see green is. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of all the charts or all the graphs over here that do not have green as the longest bar. Okay, green is the longest here, so I'm going to leave A. Green is not the longest here. It can't be B. And if I look at C, it says that brown has the most. It's the longest. No, it's not C. But look, D. D does have green as the largest. The answer is either going to be A or D. So now I'm going to figure out which one it is. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add these numbers up and make that 50 as my denominator. And now I'm going to choose a color. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to choose green because it's the longest. It's easy. And it's different in both of the graphs. So here I put 15 as my numerator. Okay, before I Tebow that, I think I'm going to try and simplify it. So I put it in an upside down staircase and I divide it by 5 and I get 3 tenths. So 1550 is simplifies to 3 tenths. Well, I don't need to Tebow that. What I need to do is just write it because there's a place value for tenths. Three tenths is written as 0.3. This is three tenths. And now to change that to a percent, I move the decimal point two places to the right, and it's 30%. 30% are green. Let's go to the chart and see what works out. Here's green. That certainly is not 30%. Let's go down to D. Yep. That could very well be 30%. The answer is D. You did a great job.